Hello, hello, welcome back to another legacy video. And if this is your first time, thanks for being here. Now today we're gonna to be producing all the components for a front entry door, a custom front entry door. And this is not the first door that we've made in the past six weeks. We've actually, this will be the third one. Um, the first one was for a glass entry door on Tracy's house. And the second one was for my front entry way as a solid hardwood raised panel door with a clear coat finish. And this one, this is also going to be a solid hardwood with, uh, with raised paneling. However, we're going to add some custom components. As shown here, we're going to have the top rail have an arched shape to it. And so that will um, receive some unique joinery applications to make that happen. The second one is we're going to be adding some custom carvings, specifically of Legacy's logo, directly into the top panel of the door itself. So when it comes to carved doors and, and carved panels, that opens up a whole new avenue of savings or potential business opportunities. So let's show you how we're producing all the components here on the Maverick 4x8 CNC system using the horizontal and vertical workstations. So the first workstation that was shown was the horizontal workstation, which is the most common. That's where we cut out the actual shape of the arch for the top rail. So that's now ready to receive the joinery that all these other components are gonna be receiving. So now we're gonna do all the joinery for the styles and rails using this vertical workstation that runs down the length of the machine. This is the door making system designed exactly for this type of application. So this allows us to get access to the long edges of these components so that we can add any type of joinery we wish. In this case, we're gonna be adding a dado slot down the entire length that's about three quarters of an inch wide. And then afterwards, we're gonna add some mortise pockets to uh, these styles, the long styles that go for the door, whereas the rails will only receive the dado slots. Now, another thing that was mentioned in previous videos and some of the comments is, hey, I can get some of these styles of doors already pre-made from other resources um, that you, know, you don't have to worry about making them yourself. And you're absolutely correct. But in this case, we want to focus on the customization and specifically the joinery. Here, the mortise and tenon we are adding is different from the joinery you will find in a door from big box stores. Those are assembled traditionally using a dowel method. Not that that's a bad way of making doors, they just can't last as long as a deep mortise and tenon that we're applying here to this door. So if you want something that is really robust that can last a really long time, having the ability to add these custom joints can take your project quality to the next level. Now let's take a look at that arched rail and how we're going to be applying that dado slot. This is actually gonna approach it the exact same way. It's gonna take the cutter, it's gonna follow that flat surface and then the cutter is gonna follow along that dip or dish of the arch. And it's just gonna repeat that process for the entire sequence. This is easily done using the Vetric software to create all the tool paths shown here. It is by far my favorite CAD CAM software for three axis functionality that will be shown throughout this entire project. The cool thing about this vertical workstation is not only can it handle parts that are really long, but also pretty thick. This bottom rail is 10 inches wide and we were able to mount it in the same workstation and still have room to apply all the joinery needed. The last rail here is the center rail and so we'll need to apply the dado on both edges before we can proceed. All the styles and rails here are made out of what, are, what is called LVL laminate material. And this is all finished with hardwood around the outer edges of the glued up laminates. Here I was able to find a local supplier that sold these five inch wide LVL styles that were 88 and 98 inches long, between 65 and $75 a piece. This type of structure makes the door, again, extremely rigid and will last a really long time with minimum warping or twisting. Now that all the dado slots and mortise pockets are complete, let's finish off the joinery by cutting all six tenons on the end of the three rails. This is done in the other vertical workstation that runs along the width or the Y axis of legacy CNC machines. There are many ways for locating and positioning your parts in the machine. Here, I'm actually using the tool itself as a stopping block 
so that I bring the part up to the right surface, which is my Z0 for the entire machining process. This way, it doesn't matter what the length is or what the size of the part is, every single surface is coming to the right level every single time. Since all the tenon cuts are being applied to the end grain of the parts, we're able to take some really aggressive and deep passes so that this is done in less than two minutes per tenon. Because each rail is a different size, that means we had to create a different tenon program for each part. However, each part could simply be flipped to the opposite side and run the exact same tenon program for both ends. Again, another cool thing about customizing your joinery is being able to apply it to the right applications. In this scenario, I'm gonna be adding raised paneling to these styles of rails. So to make everything fit together, here I had to create a step tenon that had two different depths and sizes to accommodate that scenario. The edges of each tenon was cut with a 10 thousandths allowance. So the joinery comes out nice and snug and becomes a perfect fit when assembled. With all the styles and rails now complete, let's move on to the panels. Now the last door I did that had raised panels, I ran into a problem when I was doing these as a double-sided part on the horizontal work table. I found that after cutting one side, the material would buckle and cup so that when I flipped it over and machined the second side, the thickness of the actual tenon around the edge of the panel was not a uniform thickness, but actually became a lot thinner because of the shift of the material itself. To fix that problem for this raised panel, I knew that this door was going to be a paint grade finish. So it didn't matter what I did to the surface because I could simply fill in any gaps or holes and it's all gonna be painted over. So here I actually pocketed and drilled a hole pattern that I can use in order to bolt down this panel directly to a fixture plate that is being held on the vertical workstation using Legacy's Low Pro clamps. I used the CNC to also pocket the hole pattern in the fixture plate and then installed brass inserts into all 10 of those holes. Now I could easily align the panel and even flip it over and bolt it to the same hole pattern for both sides. Now I can freely cut all edges without running into the risk of hitting into any fixtures. And so we can surface both sides to ensure that this is a perfect thickness as well as cut all the details. I didn't have access to a large planer that was 28 inches wide in order to uh, plane these down to a uniform thickness. Having the ability to surface and thickness plane on the CNC is a big game changer when it comes to using large slabs of material. Once the panel was surfaced to an exact thickness, I was able to apply all the necessary details. Here I used the exact same inch and a quarter surfacing cutter to actually cut the first half of the tenon that goes around the entire perimeter of the panel itself. You can see here we've also implemented that arch design along the top edge so that everything comes together with the top rail. Next, a large two inch cork box cutter cuts the raised panel edge that gives us that traditional look that we, that we like to see in our raised panel designs. On the first side of this panel, the last cutter being used is the 90 degree V cutter. This is used to apply those V groove details. Now we just repeat the process by flipping it over, bolting it to the same hole pattern, and running side number two. This side, however, is gonna have some more custom details. After the surfacing and core box cutter does its work, the 90 degree V cutter still puts V grooves, but you can see they stop to give clearance for the custom carving that's going to take place. The same V cutter is then used to cut Legacy's logo directly into the face of this panel. Now this is gonna be done using two different cutters. The V cutter is going to chamfer all the edges of the, of the letters and logo to give it a clean look. Next, an eighth inch tapered ball cutter is used to actually cut around the perimeter of each letter to minimize the tear of the raised details. The same cutter is then used to raster carve a dish around the entire perimeter of the logo.
Last, a 3 8 spiral cutter is used to cut out the actual raised panel to size, and this is ready to be assembled. The bottom panel received the exact same cutting sequences, just in a smaller panel size. However, it didn't receive a 3D carving. We just had those V-groove details being applied to both sides instead. Now let's take a look on how this door came together. The assembly was a little bit different from the last door. Instead of just pounding in all the rails into the styles and then sliding the panels in, the arch details made it so we had to change the assembly from inserting a rail and then a panel and alternating those two be down the entire door. But here you can see that with that 10 thousandths allowance for those mortises and using the fixture plate to hold down the panels, everything was a perfect snug fit. I just want to break down some numbers of how long it took to build the door as well as the value and cost it would be to produce these doors and how much we saved and the potential you have of producing these doors as even a business opportunity for yourself. The total time it took to take this door to a glued up unfinished door slab was 22 and a half hours. Now I'm not a professional door manufacturer, so let's break down these numbers. The material preparation time took me about eight and a half hours with two separate glue up situations and preparing all the parts to the right size before they get to the CNC machine. Over the 24 different programs that were used, cutting all the components for this door, I spent about four and a half hours setting up the CNC. The total CNC cutting time was eight hours, and it took one and a half hours to glue up the door, trim, and bevel the edges. Now let's lay out the potential savings that I had by producing this door myself. Again, we're focusing on the custom attributes. When I went out and got estimates and received quotes to produce a door of this size with high-end custom joinery, with this style that included a paint finish, Let's not forget all the other details such as boring the holes for the door handle and deadbolt, as well as the pockets for the hinges. All of these additional details added to the cost that came out to about $2,500 for a custom finished door slab of this type. Now let's take in consideration the custom carving that was added to the panels. Now this was nothing extraordinary. It was just a portion of the top panel only done on one side. This can add anywhere between $500 to $1,000 for just a simple carving of this caliper that only took an additional two to three hours to produce. So that puts the door value close to about $3,500 as a finished door slab with these custom features. Custom carvings can go well beyond this price depending on the size of the carving, if you're carving on both sides of the panels, and how much time it takes to actually produce the carvings. For example, here's some doors that a customer did in Colorado. He only carved the panels and let another manufacturer actually assemble the door. And each panel was valued at $7,000 a piece. And he didn't produce any other parts besides the panels. So if this door is valued close to $3,500, it cost me about $540 in, in raw lumber, the styles, and the finish which means I potentially saved $2,960 by producing this custom door myself. Potentially, that also means you can make that much profit if you wanted to do this as a business using the legacy CNC. Custom carved doors is a huge industry, and the multi-workstations of the legacy CNC gives you the ability to tap into those opportunities. Now, these types of videos generate a lot of different questions. I recommend you take advantage of two resources to answer your questions. First is head on over to our website at legacywoodworking.com. There you'll find all the different product information, additional cutting demonstrations, and much more. The second resource I recommend doing is actually getting in contact with one of our CNC experts. You can call them at 801-491-0010. They will be happy to answer any of your questions, put on software or cutting demonstrations with the machines, and point you to additional resources, again, to um, fulfill your needs. Now, if you'd like to just simply watch more videos, I don't blame you, just click right over there. I think we all know what to do. If you want to be notified of future videos, uh, just click that button down below, and don't hesitate to give us a like if you liked what you saw. As always, thanks for watching, and remember, Legacy solves more woodworking problems and allows you to say yes to more opportunities than any other CNC manufacturer in the industry.